So rainfall we have discussed now today is the temperature. Factors affecting crop growth and level. So it is the temperature, it is the result of the solar radiation energy that is solar radiation which that means it is the thermal index or heat energy it is generally and it considered as mean intensity of heat energy. Uh, why it, uh, temperature is important? Dependent processes are photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water. It is in presence of dough, it is in presence of solar radiation, but at certain temperature is needed uh, for this part, uh, reaction. So conversion of carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates or photosynthesis or we can say assimilates for the plant. So for this uh, suitable temperature is needed and that temperature is dependent on the solar radiation. So unless there is suitable temperature, we cannot have the, so temperature influences some biochemical reactions and the growth processes. So for uh, different crops, you will see that the winter season crops and uh, summer season crops are different, their growth habit is different under different conditions, their uh, growth is taking place. So a winter season crop a, a, or a summer season crop, if you uh, place or transplant in winter season, their growth will be stunted. Of course, the winter season crop also the growth, growth is not so much as that of summer season crop. Initial growth stage is very slow and some crops like rice, rice can be grown throughout the year but during this initial stage of growth or during the period particularly boro rice which is grown in the month of November, December, so initial growth is very less. So in that situation varieties which are generally tolerant to low temperature can be grown only. The, all the varieties cannot be grown. So for biochemical processes and growth processes, we need a certain temperature. So all physical and chemical processes inside the plant, it is taken. Then solubility of different substances, it is also temp temperature depend dependent. You know that if the uh, solution, it, if you increase the temperature, the solubility will be increased. So stability of the enzymes, different enzymes are working in the plant system, so the, for them also a suitable temperature is needed. Unless a suitable temperature is maintained, the activity of those enzymes will be ceased or minimum. Uh, each crop and species have their own cardinal points. Some points, so <coughs> you know the temperature it is not fixed, it is changing. And for each crop, they are, they are suited to a particular temperature. So those temperature may be divided into three. One is minimum, then optimum, and maximum. So within that range, uh, their the activities, you, you can uh, expect the, the potential yield if it is in optimum range. So those points, minimum and minimum, optimum, and maximum points of a particular uh, crop or variety, we call it as a cardinal temperature, and it varies according to the uh, crop. So for broad range, if you can see, it is it varies from 0 to 60. A wide range, very wide range for common, uh, all uh, for higher plants, which we grow, except the microbes. For higher plants, this is the broad range. Within this range, generally most, all the crops, higher plants. The narrow range, if you can narrow down, then 10 to 14 deg 40 degree. The, within this range, generally, you will find the most of the crops are, uh, they perform better within this uh, 10 to, and if you come very uh, still uh, narrow for maximum growth you may find here 15 to 40 degree centigrade. So most of the crop you will find that within this range their activity uh, you will find maximum growth you will expect, maximum yield you can expect 15 to 40, if you go beyond that on or less than that temperature the growth will be stunted, if it beyond that it, it may die. If it is higher temperature the uh, plants may die. So this temperature on the earth, on the globe, it again varies two ways. One is horizontally, another is vertically. Horizontally, as I have already mentioned, that as you go from away from the equator towards the polar region, you will get lower and lower temperature. So accordingly, the climate in one or two practical we have already started, it is a tropical, then subtropical, then 
temperate, sub-temperate, polar region, that type of climate you will find. Another is as you go up and up. From the mean sea level, if you go up and up, there will be decrease in temperature. So uh, this temperature variation in both way we will find. In the same place, you will find a uh, lower temperature if it is at higher altitude. Say for example, our very near our the Silong in Meghalaya, in Kohima, you will find uh, less temperature than in the plains. So many crops which are generally low temperature loving crops uh, can easily be grown there in those areas and accordingly in the <coughs> in one practical we have uh, that is agricultural institutes CPRI has one substation at Upper Silong, Meghalaya because it uh, potato it requires low temperature in the same altitude uh, some same latitude since altitude is higher so we are getting less temperature. So based on the temperature, again we can classify into tropical, temperate, so as you grow from equator, then taiga, tundra and polar. So according to temperature variation, we can classify the climate likewise. These three are six or five. Mainly the we found tropical, temperate and tundra or polar but the other two are there so total five so some in investigators they have also classified depending upon different temperature condition different crops they classify into different groups so according to this you see this one megathons that means at higher temperature crops which perform better at higher temperature it generally in equatorial and tropical region equator or tropical region will find this and high temperature throughout the year here so say for example in our case it is southern part of our country Generally, you will find mega terms or high temperature throughout the year. Then here you will find tropical rainforest and crops like tuber crops, cassava, etc. rice can be grown. These are the crops which generally warm season crops can be grown round the year since there is no winter season. So they are called mega thumbs. Then meso tropical to subtropical region so a bit low temperature it is high temperature during the summer season but alternated with low temperature during the winter season during winter you will find a sub like us in our case during summer we are getting higher temperature but low temperature during winter season here tropical deciduous forest that means the crops which shed their leaves during winter season deciduous type of forest you will find and subtropical crops like maize, sorghum, etc. can be grown. Of course, rice can be grown during summer season. The third one, so micro. Generally, low temperature it is. You will find low temperature and uh, altitude up to 12,000 fit in the tropical and subtropical region up to that altitude you will get this type of micro thumbs low temperature and mixed with conifer forests and here tem temperate crops like wheat potato lower winter season crops can be grown very easily oats wheat potato so this type of crops generally require low temperature so this type of crop can be grown in this climate and last one is Heliotherms, it is Arctic and Alpine region. Arctic very near to polar region, Arctic or Alpine, 16,000 in uh, tro tropics and 12,000 in temperate region, altitude. And here a very low temperature and Alpine vegetation, generally pines and spruce. So this type of uh, vegetation you will find there. So temperate fruits are also uh, difficult here, temperate fruits here generally in this region but in this region generally you will find alpine type of vegetation so according to the temperature variation these are the four classifications of different uh, vegetation
So now come to cardinal points. So this is important for our cardinal points because our selection of crops, it depends on this particular points, cardinal points. So every plant or crop has its minimum, optimum as I already mentioned and maximum temperature range within which its performance is found to be better. So for better growth and development generally, uh, these points are to be taken into consideration while selecting a variety, while selecting it, um, that is uh, sowing or planting time. Sowing and planting time, particularly, we should be very much cautious in selecting the sowing and planting time uh, so that uh, the particular phenological stage does not fall beyond this uh, their cardinal zone. Uh, say for example, uh, a crop which is requires 15 degree to 40 degree, so its particularly flowering period should not be beyond that. So some points are there for different activity. I will discuss later. So here three temperatures, so this definition can again be uh, considered three temperatures of vital activity. This minimum, optimum and maximum temperature, they are called uh, three temperature vital activity have been recognized as minimum, optimum, maximum points for growth of plant and they are known as cardinal temperature. So minimum cardinal temperature, optimum cardinal temperature and maximum cardinal temperature. So there is a range uh, in case of optimum there is a range it is not a single uh, point but in case of maximum or minimum we will find a, a single temperature point. So minimum that means below which the growth will not take place be any growth or even the low, uh, winter season crops the growth is very slow because the biochemical processes are not taking place pro properly at this temperature or below this temperature. Minimum cardinal then optimum maximum plant growth you can expect maximum plant growth and maximum benefit you can so we should always try to uh, uh, place try to uh, sow the crop in such a way that it will get maximum uh, or optimum temperature during its growth period or particular uh, during its flowering. Then maximum above which the plants generally normally die. If it is exceeds beyond its uh, maximum cardinal points, then the, uh, the plants will die. So these things you will find uh, are different. Let's see if some cardinal temperatures of some crops, say for rice. Don't write Fahrenheit here. Uh, only we generally we are uh, generally use we generally use the centigrade. So try to uh, note the centigrade. So here you see rice 10 to 12 degree centigrade minimum. That means if it comes below 10 to 12 degree centigrade, there will not be any growth of the crop. Then optimum 32 and maximum 36. So in general, this is the for growth, but for flowering or for food, set, food setting, again, some different. So here 36 to 38 degree, that means if the temperature at the time of uh, flowering, if it goes beyond that region, 37 or 38, or it, it is less than 10 degree, then there, there will not be any seed setting. So that is why uh, the rice in winter season in our place generally the flowering if it is if you delay the flowering uh, sowing of the rice then it will not come into flower. So there is a cut off date is there so beyond which it cannot go for transplanting of rice. Say for example wheat you see for wheat very low 4 degrees centigrade that means since it is a winter season rabi season crop or temperate uh, region it can be growth 25 degree for optimum growth and 30 to 32 degree. So at the maturity period you will find it is harvested in the month of April, later part of April or May, first week of May. So at that time you will get this temperature. But initially during the vegetative period during November, December, January, February you will find very even in the month of January very near. 4 degree or even sometimes it comes down. So at that time generally the growth ceases. Uh, some crops I have mentioned here, uh, maize accordingly, 8 to 10, very similar to rice. Then 32 degree, also similar, 40, but it can tolerate high temperature. You see, the, because maize is C4 plant, and C4 plants are hardy enough. 
so maize and millet crops are C4 crops so C4 can you will always find the uh, that is maximum temperature will be higher than the uh, other C3 cereal crops of same season rice and maize we cannot compare with wheat because wheat is a wheat can be compared with oats sorghum it is you see in case of sorghum also 40 degree others are more or less with same as maize so i also this so barley also barley and oats with wheat you see barley and oats with wheat and tobacco it is summer kharif crop you see this one and this is 35 so for is it is not possible to remember the exact value but at least major crops for rice it is we can remember for wheat we can remember for maize you can remember so these are the crops uh, major crops i have given the sorghum so it is if you know rice if you know maize then sorghum and other uh, millets millets can tolerate higher temperature so high temperature apart from yield reduction there are many injuries if it is higher beyond the cardinal points if it is low or if it is high there are some injury ill loss will be there of course there will be ill reduction but in addition to ill reduction there will be injury to the plants physical injury will find uh, which uh, i'll show some injury i'll show some pictures here here mango due to cold wave so you see that chlorotic you'll find loss of chlorophyll loss of chlorophyll chlorotic and plant will die or you see here the mango but some other uh, crops are there temperate crops they escape from the damage very near to this mango mango cannot tolerate so mango by cold wave you see this is the condition here you see that tomato plants damaged by the cold wave low temperature you see leaf shedding or premature falling of leaves dying of leaves loss of chlorophyll all these things are there so this is potato damaged by cold wave potato plants picture is not so clear up here and the apple due to high temperature you see heat wave of in the month of march generally in the month of march there is uh, no high temperature a bit uh, low temperature is there but if it, high temperature is comes then there will be early flowering up otherwise low temperature is very good for apple then atmospheric humidity this is the amount of water vapor present on the atmosphere water evaporates and the amount of also there is at certain temperature there is saturation point so there are two conditions if it is a particular temperature maximum amount of uh, humidity or water vapor is called saturated and the, actually what is present that is answer so if it is less than that maximum value it, we call it unsaturated and the relative humidity that is which we generally express we get relative humidity it is the it is a percentage what is the gap we can find it out say relative humidity is, is uh, generally it is uh, uh, expressed in the, say 65 percent 70 percent so during the kharif season we generally have 65 uh, we generally more than 80 percent in our case we generally have more than 80 percent or 85 percent or 90 percent so towards the uh, uh, so that is saturation it is towards saturation so generally during this period there is evaporation is less so relative humidity it determines the evaporation loss of water from the soil so more the humidity there, there will be less evaporation that means the water requirement for the crops will be less the, if you grow a crop under irrigated condition the gap between two irrigation will be more if the relative humidity is high say for example during kharif season during winter season on the other hand it is very near to uh, that is 50 percent or more than 50 percent is in our case generally it is around 60 or 65 percent so during this time there that means if you place water if you apply water it will very quickly it will be evaporated and uh, very frequently we need to be there is a need to irrigate 
so saturated particular temperature or pressure so it is dependent on temperature and pressure so if you raise the temperature increase the temperature there will be it becomes unsaturated once a moisture uh, or atmosphere if it is saturated if you increase the temperature it will be unsaturated condition because it will have more capacity it will have the more capacity to uh, accept to hold the water under higher temperature so at any increase in temperature water remaining constant will be the air will be unsaturated so these are the conditions relative humidity affected by wind then exposure vegetation and water content in the soil if there is a it is the wind is blowing that means relative humidity will be less because the amount of water vapor will be taken out from one place to other place so affected by wind exposure large area it is, if it is uh, exposed area then the air will be more unsaturated that means the atmosphere relative humidity will be less if it is uh, uh, surrounded by vegetation near forest area you will find more humid uh, type of climate vegetation then water content of the soil in case of dry soil the air will be dry in case of moist soil if you apply uh, irrigation or there is rain the moist soil you will find saturated or high relative humidity in the atmosphere so these are the four things generally relative humidity is being affected so, so it is generally so increases with temperature evapotranspiration but decreases with relative humidity high the relative humidity decreases with high relative humidity evapotranspiration then affected quantity quality of irrigation as i have already mentioned if the humidity is high that means more less it will be required temperature is high that means less uh, that is humidity will be less that means more irrigation will be required so it is generally related with the relative humidity in the atmosphere the moist air another thing besides this it is generally favors the growth of fungi and bacteria that means there will be more infestation of pests and diseases if the humidity is higher the uh, humidity is more so moist condition is prevailing then you will find a lot of fungi and bacteria for example one potato disease blight disease of potato or tea even in the insect and pests also so very quick uh, multiplication uh, will be there uh, if it is moist condition under dry condition generally that is why during winter season uh, uh, infestation of pests and diseases is less for example in case of rice uh, the um, one rice is grown november december to the february now uh, april it is harvested in the april or may just uh, same season with the wheat so in that uh, rice even if you grow the same variety in kharif season and that season that is winter season it is of course called as, as summer rice so that rice has very less pest and diseases because during that time it is a uh, atmospheric uh, relative humidity in the atmosphere is very less totally dry season is there and low temperature so also appearance acid insects in case of mustard rapeseed mustard continuously for two or three days if there is uh, cloudy weather during winter season generally rainfall is very less or uh, less amount of rainfall we are receiving but even if a uh, rainfall is less sometimes it happens the uh, continuous is two or three days there is cloudy weather so in that case the aphid is generally is a problem is coming to the rapeseed mustard in case of potato you will find disease blight disease lead blight of potato it is very dangerous for potato so the, that type of humid condition if it is prevailing for uh, several days two or three days then automatically this then solar radiation so it is uh, it should have been discussed earlier number one but uh, uh, we have discussed number four solar radiation solar radiation it is the responsible for photosynthesis not only maintaining the temperature on the 
atmosphere but also the photosynthesis it is main source of energy for the life on the earth so two essential needs one is photosynthesis light it is photosynthesis and other activities like germination leaf expansion stem and shoot growth flowering fruiting and even dormancy so they are all dependent on light flowering have you observed the flowering of plants some crops are there they are not flowering any time of the year a particular season only they come into flower mon kori sir ha have you observed season dependent so that depends upon the light period that is flowering fruiting and even the dormancy also dormancy that means the seeds will not germinate they remain dormant for certain period and the, the light is responsible for that so these are one way these are the things generally solar radiation controls of course the photosynthesis is main but besides this these are the and second one is the thermal condition that means it maintains which we have already discussed the thermal condition which we so for different physiological and biochemical activities of the plant for growth to thermal condition thermal condition we have already discussed but here these are the condition here i want to show you uh, uh, that is uh, the solar radiation that so three segments we have in solar radiation ultraviolet rays this is the range visible rays light so photosynthesis is taking place within this visible range visible range 0.4 to 7.7 micrometer and infrared radiation so these two are generally not so much important as this one third, middle one infrared 0.7 to 50 micro so are chemically very active so uv it is being protected by ozone layer it is there you have hard ozone layer so but due to pollution of course it is also dependent on different agricultural activities nowadays it is uh, in the news that there is a damage in the ozone layer and one of the reason is the pollution created by agrochemicals particularly uh, are also responsible some greenhouse gases then have detrimental effect our atmosphere so these things i have already mentioned atmosphere regulator and a very small amount is reaches very small amount of course that visible light it is sensitive to our eye and directly or indirectly influenced all the processes visible light so orientation of the shoot also so because the above ground portion it is generally coming towards the light the roots will go to the darker side and the uh, leaves and shoots will come to the upper side so orientation of shoot then essential correct intensity quality for plant growth and development then third one is infrared solar radiation higher than the visible wavelength so normal effects on the plants it has no deleterious effect as that of uv light but it has normal effects on the plant supply is necessary thermal energy maintaining temperature this range is also important uh, for supplying thermal energy then in presence of water vapor this radiation doesn't cause any harm to the plant as that of uh, it is not like that of uv light uv light has a, a harmful effect but it has no harmful effect so in various way it light affects one is intensity what intensity how intensely we are getting the intensity is the important thing then quality of light wavelength that means in the visible range also all the wavelengths are not needed for the photosynthesis generally red and violet range two ranges are important very much important for photosynthesis so quality is important then duration what period we are getting what is the period of light depending upon this generally will the performance of the crop will be 
will vary then direction from which direction so these are the four uh, parameters of life so, so intensity generally it is uh, related dry matter production during the cloudy weather it is very much limited so that is why uh, the yield of the kharif crops kharif rice particularly in our situation the kharif rice is less than the boro rice the winter season which is grown during because during kharif rice most of the our sky is covered by clouds so we are getting the diffuse light we are not getting the bright sunshine hours if you take the if you observe the uh, that is uh, uh, meteorological data there is one parameter is the bright sunshine hours so the bright sunshine hour is higher in case of winter season though the day length total day length in winter season is less than the kharif season but due to this uh, over cloud sky summer kharif season the bright sunshine hour is less so the photosynthetic activity during this season is less as a result the yield of kharif rice is less than the yield of boro rice or so depending upon the nature of it is again heliophytes that means sun loving crops are there and particularly the creepers the creepers you will find they they will always try to reach the top of the vegetation so creepers are heliophytes and seophytes shed loving say uh, crops like best example is tea garden tea tea is grown under partial shed condition turmeric ginger pineapple so this type of crops they are generally second group seophytes that means shed loving their performance is better in under partial light condition but this uh, this heliophyte groups they love light so their performance is better under direct bright sunshine so how are crop like sunflower buckwheat tobacco during summer season produce greater if it is slightly shaded so some crops are there during summer season they are slightly shaded so their performance is better then quality quality that means what uh, what is the wavelength so wavelength generally two wavelengths are there so here one is violet this uh, this range visible ray within the visible rays this violet range and yellow blue so this uh, this range you see the uh, ther thermal energy level 10% here only ultraviolet led though it is harmful and it is already it is checked it is not coming to dark very little amount is coming and the energy level is less but here you see the energy level is 40% and infrared it supplies the thermal energy though it do not have any harmful effect 18% thermal rays and here 32% far red and infrared so almost 50% is coming from here so there is there are as an responsible in maintaining the thermal condition or warmness in the, on the earth so here out of this this violet and blue yellow up to this range they are very much essential for photosynthesis blue violet and this one principal wavelengths absorbed in are in the blue violet blue range and orange range orange red these two ranges are generally the plants absorb under these two violet blue and orange red so red light it seems to be more favorable and followed by violet blue violet blue and red light so quality is very much important quality of light duration now comes total duration of the light it is important depending upon the duration we generally group into different long day short day plan so day length is greater influence than the intensity intensity is also the but day length particularly the uh, photosensitive crops the crops which dependent on the light period are generally influence greater by this day length so this is called photoperiodism the response of particular plant who is generally responds to the light period so they do not come into flower in any time of the year for example many crops are there mango jackfruit why we are getting at certain season because they come into flower at particular 
day long period only so that is why even the our cultivated crops are also there they are dependent largely dependent temperature as well as this light period so of course uh, even though our photo periodically sensitive but some uh, varieties are there they can be grown throughout the year provided the temperature is there so light uh, rice generally normally it is photo periodically it is sensitive it is a long uh, short day plant so photoperiodism according to photoperiodism we can divide into three one is long day plants that means when the plant come into flower when the light period or day length is more than 12 hours light period is more than 12 hours so those type of plants are called long day plant which are the long day plant then a plant grown during the kharif season or during the winter season kon bol ha huh? kharif season crops when they come into flower they come into flower when there will be decreasing the day length come into flower in the month of october or november so here generally the kharif season for, for example rice rice generally grown in kharif season come into flower in october november so rice it is it is not a long day we are discussing about long day it is a short day when the temperature is, that is uh, illumination will be less than 12 hours then only it will come into flower so here generally winter season crops like wheat wheat is grown in november december january february march april may april at the end of april and may it is harvested so it will come into flower in the month of march when the day length will be uh, higher than the 12 hours so 12 more than 12 hours illumination is needed for initiation of flower bud other group is short day plant less than 12 hours for example is rice of course some varieties are there for varieties of rice is there can be grown throughout the year provided the temperature and water is suitable then one third group is day neutral they do not have any response to the for any time of the year can be grown if the temperature is congenial they can be grown say for example sunflower sunflower can be grown throughout the year so some influence photo period if you do not have so plant characters like flower initiation development and bulb formation rhizome that means reproductive stages are mainly uh, the crop responses in the reproductive stages if they do not get uh, that particular day length they will not come into produce this flower or bulb or rhizome say a rice a photosensitive rice if you uh, transplant in the month of around a year say for example if you transplant and it, if it is photosensitive that means it is a short day plant so it will come when it the temperature uh, day length will be less than 12 hours so rice normally photosensitive rice group photosensitive group of rice normally flower, come into flower in the month of october you will see in our uh, fields in the third week of october to third week and fourth week of october to first week of november generally this is the time period uh, in which uh, it comes into flower so if a long day plant is subjected to short day period long day plant that means who it is subjected to short day period decreasing diminishing then what will happen internodes may be shortened rosette form stunted internodes will not be elongated so rosette for, uh, formation will be there the growth will not be there stunted growth will be there so flowering will not take place so wheat is grown during kharif season then it will happen like this way and if a short day plant rice is grown during this season long day period growth of the plants become abnormal but no flower initiation the growth will be there it is short day but it is placed in the long day period it is getting the long day environment temperature is congenial for growth but it will not come into flower only vegetative you will find vegetative growth and one best example is during uh, ahu season february march in our case green gum and black gum are grown but if it is sowing is a bit delayed if it is sown in a month of april it will not come into flower so only vegetative you will got you will get profuse growth but fruit setting will be seed setting will be very less
So some flowering will say short day plants for example here I have given mentioned some of the plants. Soybean, maize, millet, strawberries, chrysanthemum, cosmos, asar. Short day plant. So here you may add rice, rice I have already mentioned so that is why I have not mentioned here. So these are the some of the short day plants. The long day plants besides wheat, so sugar beet, barley, lettuce, spinach, radish, potato, cruciferous. Crociferous means brassica family, under brassica family, all are long day plant. They will come into flower in the month of February or March when the day length will be increasing. And day neutral. Here there are in addition, huh? besides sunflower, tomato, asparagus, cotton, tobacco. They are not, they can be grown round the year, provided the temperature is within the cardinal points. Within maximum, maximum, minimum limit if it is there, then we can grow these day neutral plants around the year. The direction of light, it is also very much important. So light generally, uh, from which side it is coming? In our in north, uh, north hemisphere, northern hemisphere, we get light from the southern side. Southern hemisphere, they are getting from the northern side. So for better penetration, generally our road direction should be north, south, north, east, west. If it is east to west, particularly during winter season, uh, the shadow of this row light will fall on this. So the, the, uh, the row of crop uh, which is here, it will not get direct light. It will get the diffuse light or partial light or shade, shade will, because the shade of this row crop will fall on this row crop. So direction of light is very much important and that is why our road direction is always north-south. So that there is better penetration uh, throughout the day. Of course in the evening period there will be some shadow will be there of this row, on this row. But if you place like this way, whole day the shadow of uh, this row will fall on this. So roots, shoot and leaves show different orientation to the direction of light. In temperate regions, temperate does as slopes, south slopes. In the temperate region, south slopes show better growth than the north slope. Because light is very little amount of light, the intensity light is coming. And this side is the south slope, it is facing towards the sun. So that is why the slopes, south slope, the growth of the plant is better than the north slope due to direction of light.